What if I told you that playing bar chords is actually quite simple? Well, I would obviously be lying, right? Because bar chords are not simple at all. However, there are a couple of simple tips and tricks that will help you to structure and understand them better and will allow you to play them with less effort. So this is what we are going to talk about today. Now, the first thing you want to do is to pick up your guitar Duh. and uh, find a good comfortable position where you have a good access to the fretboard with your left hand. Um, next thing you want to avoid is to use this front flat part of your finger because it's, it's way too soft and instead you want to use something more towards the side where it's uh, harder and the reason for that it's going to be a little bit more resistant, it will cover uh, the strings a bit better and causing you, I don't know, less buzzing or noises. The next thing you want to avoid is to hold your elbow sideways like this. You want to let it fall a little bit, little bit and relax like this. And the reason for that is that you are going to use the natural weight of your arm to help you with the bar chord. Hold on for a second, Betty. What do you mean by using the weight of your arm? Well, think about this. If you want to lift up something really heavy, you won't just rely on your fingers or your hands solely, but you are going to involve your bigger, stronger muscles in this movement. So you are going to use your upper arm, your shoulders, and the muscles of your back, right? Now, this is going to be something similar. So instead of clipping the neck with your first finger and your thumb, you want to use the natural weight of your arm to pull your finger a little bit. So this way into the fretboard, you want to pull this pure little finger into the fretboard. And remember we said use this side part. So you put it there and you want to pull it a little bit with your upper arm and with the natural weight of your arm. You probably know this next thing, but the sound gets cleaner when you play closer to the fret. So when I play a bar chord, uh, first, I find this, this good position for the side of my finger and then by using the weight of my arm, I kind of pull the finger into its position. I kind of pull it into its place and as close to the fret as possible. And the next thing is something that took me years to realize or to, I don't know, to build into my playing. And that's going to be how you don't need to hold every single strings with the same power. So for example, if you have a chord like this, you only need to hold the first string and the upper two, right? That's Those are the strings that you're going to have under your first finger but the rest of the strings you don't need to apply too much pressure so if i release these fingers if i release the second third and fourth finger it's going to sound like this so i only apply pressure to the strings that i actually need to hold and that will help me to optimize my effort. Now if you've been following this channel for a while you probably know that I'm trying to break every technique down into the segments of uh, tense movements and relaxation and with bar chords it's going to look something like this. So let's say you have a chord and then as soon as you pick the chord you are going to need less and less pressure to maintain that sound because you know the second you pick a string it's going to have a big amplitude but right after being picked this amplitude is going to get smaller and smaller so you need to apply less and less pressure on the strings to maintain the clarity of the sound and just by utilizing the opportunity uh, during you know the ringing notes and the ringing chords to relax my hands a little bit, I can save so much energy which will help me to play for longer and with you know ease and effortlessly. I'm going to talk a little bit about the thumb position before I show you an exercise that can help you to improve your bar chords, but honestly I see very little talk or very little information about thumb positions on the internet so I wanted to talk about it briefly. So most teachers are teaching thumb position as you're supposed to hold your thumb aligned or 
parallel to the threads behind the neck, right? So it, it should look something like this. And you put it back and then you put your fingers on, on the thread. Now, my problem with this idea is that it will end up in, I don't know, in this weird angled wrist position and will force you to hold your elbow sideways like this. And this will prevent you from using the weight of your arm. So basically you will need to use more effort for simple movement. Now the thumb position I use is something that I invented for myself and I worked on my technique and I, you know, I just found a position that that fits to my technique, my own hand, and it might won't help you too much, it might won't fit you, but you have to see it for yourself. So just give it a go. But basically what I do, or the way I teach it for my students, is just to give me a thumbs up, yay! And then put this thing behind the neck, like this, very simple. You have the thumbs up and you put it behind the neck. So basically your thumb is pointing up to the ceiling and by holding it like this, it will feel like your thumb is natural continuation of your lower arm. And you put it behind the neck and you place your fingers on the fretboard very, very simply. Now this thumb position will allow me to have very simple wrist position. And if you look at my, my uh, left hand, you will see that it's just very, just one line. Now this also means that I don't have set rules for where my thumb is supposed to sit. So sometimes it's um, you know aligned with my second finger, sometimes it's aligned with my first finger, sometimes even with the, the third finger. So it can be anywhere as long as it supports the idea of, uh, of using the weight of the arm. As long as I'm not clipping the neck, but I'm helping these fingers to put pressure into the neck, I don't care where my thumb is. Of course, there are going to be cords where I have to bring my wrist a bit out, like, I don't know, something like this, but I always make sure that as soon as possible, I go back to my natural wrist position, which is, you know, which is just very simple and straight. And then whenever I need to leave it, I will leave it, but I will make sure to go back as soon as possible. Okay, let me just show you the exercise first, and then we are going to talk about it. It's going to be based on tension and relaxation. There are going to be tense parts and relaxed parts. So you're starting from the third, third fret. So when you play the bar chords, you want to use every information we were just talking about. And uh, of course, the bar chords are going to be a little bit more stressful and stiff or hard movements. But then every bar chord is going to be followed by a single note, which you can play with very little effort, right? Because it's, it's a simple note. Um, and that relaxation will give you some opportunity to prepare for the upcoming um, tense movement. Now by adding one string at a time will help you to gradually increase the difficulty and you will see where your struggle is. So immediately after playing the bar chord just relax a little bit and this has to be very effortless. The single note is effortless and moving on. Relax. Tension. Relaxation tension, relaxation, and then make sure to go back to, it's this simple. 
don't forget that you can change angles and thumb positions and I don't know your elbow position a little bit while you play this exercise you don't have to go with the same position just just play around with it a little bit all right now if you've made it till the end then you're a champ and thank you so 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 much for watching I hope you enjoyed the video and I know how frustrating or difficult it can be to improve your guitar or classical guitar skills I totally feel you and if you need some more guidance or help with that I only can recommend these 11 exercises or the video I made about how to get really good at classical guitar which you can find here now on your way out make sure to boop the like button and I hope to see you in the next video bye